Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. We know that the flux density distribution in the air gap of an AC machine has to be ideally sinusoidal. It means that the flux density under a pole is not uniform at each end every point, but the magnetic flux density is maximum along the axis of a pole and then it gradually falls sinusoidally as we move away from the axis on both sides of each pole. Therefore, we have a sinusoidally distributed flux density wave in the air gap of a machine. And the aim here is to determine the flux per pole of such a magnetic flux distribution. We need to determine flux per pole. Okay. So for that matter, let us initially consider for the sake of simplicity a two pole machine. machine and suppose therefore the axis of the field is along this line. So this is the magnetic field axis now since we have considered a two pole machine it means that if we draw a vertical line here, We will have one pole on one side of this line and another opposite pole on the other side of this line. Therefore, we have a north pole on this side and we have a south pole on this side. And therefore, the magnetic flux density in the air gap can be plotted as function of the space variable theta. plot B versus theta as minus pi by 2, 0, pi by 2, pi pi by 2. So, we have plotted the magnetic variation of magnetic flux density as a function of this space angle theta. We see that at theta equal to 0, the magnetic flux density is maximum and similarly, the magnetic flux density is maximum but up negative at uh, theta equal to pi that is under, at the axis of the north pole. So here we have a south pole and we have a north pole from pi by 2 to 3 pi by 2. Now to determine the flux under one pole of this magnetic flux density distribution, let us consider a small portion of the air gap. at an angle theta from the magnetic field axis and let this portion of the air gap, the small portion of the air gap subtend an angle d theta at the center. And suppose the r is the radius of the air gap. Let 
L be the axial length of the stator or rotor. Axial length of both the stator and rotor posts are equal. Therefore, the area of this portion, this small portion of the air gap will be given by area of the elemental portion dA will be equal to this will be equal to rd theta r d theta is one dimension into the other dimension is L. In fact, we are considering the portion of the air gap which if we look from the air gap it will be a rectangular strip which has one dimension equal to r d theta and the actual dimension L. So we can rewrite it as L r d theta. Now, the flux density at this point will be given by flux density at theta will be given by B theta, will be simply B peak cos theta. This is equation number as 1. This is equation number 2, where B peak is the maximum value of the flux density which is along the, this axis. So, this is here B peak and it then varies cosinusoidally with space angle theta. And we can assume since the area of this strip is very small, we can assume that the flux density in this area is constant and it is equal to B peak cos theta and therefore the flux passing through this elemental uh, area will be given by flux through the elemental area area d phi will be equal to b at theta into the area that is b theta into d a which can be written as b p cos theta into l r d theta which can be written as b p L R cos theta d theta equation number 3 and the flux under one pole will therefore be obtained by integrating this flux from an angle minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 because this uh, pole spans from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 therefore the flux under one pole, flux under one pole, which we call as flux fourth pole, phi will be equal to integration of this BP LR cos theta d theta from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. We can see that this is constant this portion can be taken out B P L R and then we have integral of cos theta from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 which is B P L R 
साइन थीटा विथ दीज लिमिट्स एंड यू कैन इजीली सी दैट इट विल बी इक्वल टू डी पी एल आर दिस इज वन माइनस माइनस वन दिस इज टू देर फोर फाइनली वी हैव द एक्सप्रेशन एज ट्वाइस डी पी L R. So the flux per pole or a two-pole machine is given by this expression. Twice B P L R. Now, if we have a p-pole machine. we can easily see that for a p pole machine also the magnetic flux density varies as b theta is equal to b peak cos theta theta is an electrical angle then this equation we hold good for a p pole machine as well but as far as the, the area of an elemental portion is concerned this is the actual area where in we have to use the actual angle or the mechanical angle here angle has to be measured as a mechanical angle and therefore for a people machine we, we could write d phi as b peak l r cos theta and to differentiate down the uh, the way of measuring the two angles i put here as theta e this electrical angle and with this angle i put subscript theta m equation number 5 and now we know the mechanical angle d theta m will be equal to 2 upon p d theta e and hence to calculate the flux per pole let's first write the expression for d theta phi will therefore be equal to b peak l r cos theta e into 2 upon p i write it here 2 upon p b theta e 6 and therefore the flux per pole will be given by integrating this again between the limits minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 because electrically a pole will span 180 degrees so therefore pi will be equal to 2 upon b b peak l r cos theta e d theta e integrated from minus pi by 2 to I think two, which could be written as if we take the integral, therefore this portion is constant, and then the integration of this portion is two, so it will be four upon p v peak l r. So this is the final expression for the flux per pole of a machine. Equation seven. and uh, this equation holds good for a two pole machine also if you substitute appear for p here p equal to 2 then it will be twice b p l r so this is the general expression for the flux per pole of an ac machine now we could do here in this expression we have substituted for d theta m to have substituted for theta e here in terms of mechanical angle and then the limits would have been taken from you you could have you should have multiplied this by 2 by p here and 2 by p here 
and then if we take the limits, we'll again get the same expression. So we'll here take a break, and in the next lecture, we'll discuss uh, the basic operating principle of induction machines. Thank you.